Welcome to the AE Juice YouTube channel. I'm Chris and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the typewriter effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and you've got a brand new sequence created, we're first just going to begin by creating a new black video. So we'll go down to the new item button, go to black video, we'll press OK on this and then we'll just drag that over onto our sequence on video layer one like so. So at the moment this is around five seconds long. Now from here we'll just go over into the effects tab and we're going to search for tint so that is T-I-N-T -T, and we'll drag that onto our black video. Now from here we'll go into tint, we'll go to map black 2, select the black box here and we'll just drag this down to the white and we've turned our black background into a white background. Now of course from here we don't want to mess with this so we're just going to lock this by selecting the toggle track lock so that's the padlock icon. And then from here, we can move on and go ahead and create our text. So we'll go into File, New, Legacy Title. We'll press OK on this window. Or of course, you can rename this if you want. But I'm just going to leave that as Title 01 for now. So from here, we're just going to go ahead and create a new title. So we'll just select anywhere in this box here. And then we'll just type out a word of your choice. So type Writer Effect in Premiere and then we're just going to select all of that and we're going to change the color of the font by going down to this here so on the tab on the right you've got legacy title properties we've got transform properties fill and this is what we want to affect here so we'll change the fill color from white to black we can change the font by going up to this box here so at the moment it's set to Adobe clean UX of course though you can change this to anything you like so I've changed my font to curry and new and doing so has increased the size of the font. So I'm just going to pull the size of this down so that it now fits in the screen. And we'll use these two center buttons down here to center it up on the horizontal and the vertical axis. And once that's in the center, we'll just X out of this window, go back into our project tab and we'll drag title one onto video layer two. So there you go. You've got our typewriter effect in Premiere text sitting there on the timeline. At the moment though, it's not really doing anything, so we're just going to apply a crop or a linear wipe effect. Now the reason why I say a crop or a linear wipe effect is because sometimes the linear wipe effect doesn't work for some people and sometimes the crop effect doesn't work for some people. The technique is exactly the same, it's just two different plugins, but I'll show you both versions just in case. So we'll go into effects and we'll search for crop. We'll drop crop onto our title. We'll go to the very beginning. We'll go to crop right and we'll increase this all the way up to around, we'll go 90%. You just want to basically make that text disappear. We'll create a brand new keyframe. Then we'll go a few seconds over to the right and we'll pull this back down to zero. So if we play this back, you can see that it's now typing on. Of course, though, if crop isn't working for you, then we can just turn that off and we'll search for linear wipe. We'll drop linear wipe onto the title again. And we'll do transition completion. So at the moment, if I increase the transition completion, you can see it's going from left to right. Of course, we need that to go the other way round. So we're just going to change the wipe angle to minus 90. And now if you do that, you can see that is now typing on. So we're going to start at around 90% again. We'll create a new keyframe near the beginning. Then we'll scroll a few seconds to the right and we'll pull this down to zero. And when we play this back, you can see we've got this really awesome typing effect. So there's two different ways of doing the same effect. If linear wipe doesn't work, use crop. If crop's not working, use linear wipe. But they both do exactly the same as you can see. So the typing effect is basically now complete. We just need to add the blinking cursor to complete this effect. So in order to do this, we need to drag a new black video onto video layer three. So we'll go into our project tab. So we've got project AE Juice tutorial, and we'll drop this black video onto video layer three. Of course, if that's not working for some reason though, then you can just create a new black video by going into new item, black video, okay, and then dragging that onto video layer three. And as you can see, because I've dropped that on top of everything, everything has now turned black. It hasn't deleted anything. If I turn the layer off, everything is there. It's just, this is a black layer and it's sitting on top of everything. So from here, we need to change the scale of this down to a very small cursor. So we're gonna go into our effects tab up here. So we've got motion, Got position scale we're going to 
uncheck the uniform scale option. And this is basically just unlinking the horizontal and the vertical axis on your scale. So as you can see, if I pull the scale down with it checked on, then everything is going to scale down according to this aspect ratio. But if I uncheck that, you can see I can affect the width and I can affect the height independently. So I just pull the height down to around the height of the text. So let's go for seven and then we'll pull the scale width all the way down to 0 0.5. And we'll just move the position over. If that's still a bit too thick, you can always pull this down to 0 0.3 and that'll make that even thinner. Of course, if it's not high enough, if it's not tall enough, you can just increase that as well. So from here, what we want to do is we want to animate the position of this line now to follow the cropping, the typing effect from the text. So we're going to start over here on the left. We'll just pull the black video over to the left. So it starts around here and we'll just create a brand new keyframe on position. Now we'll go to the end where the word is finished. So around here and we'll just drag the position over to the right. So as you can see, I made a keyframe at the beginning here by selecting the stopwatch icon. It's animated over to the right, I changed the position and that's added another keyframe. So if we play this back, you can see it is following, but it's just a little bit behind in some areas. As you can see here, especially it falls behind the R and we always want it to be in front. So we're just going to adjust the position a little bit like so, just to correct that. You might have to go through and make a few corrections along the way. That's completely fine. So now that it's looking great, we now need to focus on that quintessential blinking cursor effect that the typewriter has. So there's one of two different ways of doing this. We can either cut the video or we can adjust the opacity using the keyframes. So we'll start with opacity. So we'll go onto our opacity down here. Just gonna zoom in on this tab by pressing the plus button. Then we're just gonna create a brand new keyframe on opacity at 100% at the very beginning. Then we'll go two frames to the right, one, two, and we'll pull this down to zero. Then we're just gonna copy those two keyframes. So we'll select those both. Go Command C or Control C if you're on Windows. We'll go two frames to the right and Command V or Control V. And that's gonna paste that. So as you can see, we've now got this blinking effect happening for a few frames. We want this to last a lot longer though. So we're gonna select all of those keyframes there. Command C, two frames to the right, Command V. Select all of those, Command C. We'll go to that last keyframe, two frames over, Command V. You kind of get the idea, kind of understand what we're doing here. We're just selecting all of these keyframes, two frames over and then pasting in again. And there you go. That should cover us for the entire animation. So let's play that back. There you go. As you can see, we've got that blinking effect. If that's a little bit too fast for you though, then not to worry, you can always just increase the gap between those frames. So rather than having two frames in between each keyframe, you can have three or four. Of course though, that does mean you're going to see that blinking effect happening. So you can do it the other way. So we can cut. So let's get rid of all of those keyframes, pull that up to 100% and you can cut. So we'll go two frames to the right, we'll make a cut, two frames to the right, make a cut, two frames to the right, make a cut, two frames to the right, make a cut, and we'll just delete every other video. And as you can see, that looks a little bit better than doing the opacity method. The problem is though, if you've got a long paragraph or a long text, then unfortunately this is just gonna take you forever to do it this way. So let's just undo what we just did there. We'll drag that back to the very beginning, go into effects, and we're going to search for strobe. So as you can see, you've got stylized strobe light. We'll drag that onto the black video. And if we play this back, you can see it's doing that blinking effect, but it's just, not exactly the quickest. So we're just going to go into strobe lights. You can see we've got strobe color. We want to keep that as white to match the white background. Blend with original is basically like an opacity tool. So we'll just keep that at zero. So moving on, we can see we've got strobe duration and that is currently set to 0.5. As you can see, that is how that looks. But if we change this down to 0.4, you can see that increases just a little bit. And if we pull this down to 0.3, it's going to go even further like so. Then of course we've got strobe period, so we can change this down and that's going to affect it like this. So as you can see, pulling the strobe duration and the strobe period down is going to add a quicker blink. And then of course we've got the random strobe probability. So if we increase this, it's gonna throw in some random strobes. 
And then of course you've got strobe, strobe operator, random seed, but all of these settings don't really matter for now. But let's just play this back. And as you can see, we've got this really awesome typewriter effect in Premiere Pro. Now there's just a few things that I need to mention about this typewriter effect before you finish the video. If you're doing paragraphs, rather than typing out a paragraph in the legacy title window, you need to create a new title and a new line for each line of the paragraph that you're doing. So if I was to do another line, I would have to go back up into file, new, legacy title, make another title in this window here. I'd have to drag that onto the sequence on another layer, pull this down like so. And then you would have to animate this line animating on that. So essentially you're starting from square one on each individual line. I know it's a bit time consuming, but unfortunately that's the only way that Premiere works on this specific effect at the moment. After Effects does have a specific typewriter plugin, but of course that does mean you have to have After Effects to use that. And just another side note, if you wanted to copy this and add another layer, normally you would just select everything, paste it, and then just change what's there. But the problem is if I change this, let's go, hello. As you can see, doing that, it has changed the new title, but it has also changed the old title. And that's because when you change this title, you're changing this title as well. When you're copying this, you're not copying this as a preset, you're copying the entire thing, which means changing the copied version also changes the original. So that means if you wanted another version of this typewriter effect, then you would have to start from scratch at the very beginning again. And there you go. That is how you do the typewriter effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Don't forget to check out the AE Juice website and check out the Premiere Pro bundle specifically because there's some really awesome effects and plugins for Premiere over there that are really going to help to spice up your video and add that extra layer of awesome onto your work. So go ahead, check out the Premiere Pro bundle on the AE Juice website. And of course, if you like this content, then don't forget to subscribe, press the like button, leave a comment, press the bell icon to be notified for future uploads. And I will see you on the next video. See you there.